Okay, so the question is, why would you recommend Gutenberg for a project? I mean, I mean, a non-technical person maybe, or some other types, because of the, the editing experience. Pure, pure and simple. You can easily create columns, which I will show you right now. So to answer that question, let's just go ahead and close this off. And before we do that, let's get some content. So let me grab some content here. What I can do is I can come along in here. I can copy, cop, copy this and I can paste it. Done. Okay. Now, let's, um, let's now create a column. All right. I can come along in here and say columns. And then I can say 50 by 50. Okay. 50% by 50%. And then in the first one, let's put in, let's put in a heading and let's change this to an H3 and let's call this Features. Oh, can't even spell. Features. And then let's just chuck in this HTML, uh, sorry, this paragraph block. And here you can see I can move blocks around. And then I can chuck it in. All right, another question. Uh, this would be useful for migrating someone from, Drup from WordPress to Drupal. You know what? Okay, that comment about for migrating someone from WordPress to Drupal, I, didn't, I did not think about that. That's a very smart idea. Because yes, the markup, and I'll show you that towards the end, I've got it in my notes to show you how this content is stored. Would, would content, that's a, that, that is a very interesting question. Would content created on a Drupal site using Gutenberg be compatible with Gutenberg created in a WordPress site? Because at the end of the day, my understanding is that it is React. React reads like, like um, JSON comments to kind of create and bind to the markup. So it could, absolutely. That is, a, that, that is probably an idea for another video. <laughs> How to migrate Drupal, no, WordPress to Drupal, and then also Drupal to WordPress as well, just to be objective. All right, so here, okay, coming, coming back to here, let's also create another block here, and I'll call this, uh, I'll chuck in another header, and then I'll call this, uh, I don't know, why Drupal, and then we can just chuck in this, all right? So, Straight away, you have created, you have given your editor. So coming back to the question of why would, would I recommend um, uh, Gutenberg is that you can create markup like this and it just works. Of course, there's probably a bit of styling involved on the front end. This is, understand, this is Drupal. It's got to be some bit of development work. Um, but if we have a look at the outline, okay, you can have a look and see all of the blocks that are used. And you can go ahead and move and move them around. So if you want, why Drupal to be at the bottom? Chuck it at the bottom. If you want them to be above, chuck them at the top. And so, yeah, it, 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 it does work pretty well. So now if we save this, let's go ahead and save it and take a look and see what looks on the front end. All right, you can see here, I think probably some, to be expected, uh, Olivier, is that the right name for this? Um, let me zoom that in. Hopefully you guys can see it. Uh, the front end theme probably needs to be fixed up to handle perhaps a few things here, but hey, it's all it can all be done with front end work. Uh, it can all be done with just a bit of front end work. Um, okay, so common is here. Okay, maybe the fields in a database are not 100% compatible. Well, this simply just stores everything in a long text field in the database, and that's it. Okay. Another comment, I was just thinking of them having the same experience, but if I could migrate their content as well, that would be really cool. Exactly. Um, that's another good thing to think about. Training editors. You know, train them up on using Gutenberg and then you can plug in any, any type of backend that you want. You could even use a non-PHP backend as long as you can integrate Gutenberg with it. Then yeah, absolutely. You could do a thing where, yeah, interesting. Yeah, there's... There's a lot of, well, there are a lot of good questions and answers in this stream, which I am enjoying. Okay, so that is, so coming back to this. So as you can see, the editor experience um, using Gutenberg is pretty powerful. It gives you a lot of flexibility. Now, I've had conversations, you know, in the pub at DrupalCons and Drupal Souths, and now Drupal South is just a little, um, well, a smaller conference 
um, for Drupal um, in Australia, New Zealand. And we often have discussions about how much power, how much, how much flexibility do you want to give to, to the editor? Because with great flexibility, no, with great flexibility comes great power. You can do a lot of things, but you can also screw up a lot of things. Um, but I do think, um, I do think Gutenberg really does give you a nice editor experience. Now, I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent here. Drupal does have Layout Builder, but Layout Builder is geared towards managing layouts, hence the name Layout Builder, whereas Gutenberg is more geared towards actually creating content. You would write a tutorial in this. I have written hundreds of tutorials using Gutenberg, whereas Layout Builder is more for creating layouts and potentially as a page builder, I think. So there's... There's, you know, there's multiple, you know, just like with anything Drupal, there's multiple ways of doing things. All right, I'm just looking at my list of stuff, the outline, the search. All right, I'm not, okay. So the other cool cool thing I'll show you before we finish up is just embedding blocks and oh, and we'll go into more detail on that later on. But just to show you the power of Gutenberg again, what we could do is create another column here and let's call this one, oh, let's use the 3366. And I'll chuck in a heading and I'll call this search. And then I'll go here. Now, it is a bit, sometimes finding the correct block to select can be a, a little annoying. So I do recommend that you often have this list uh, view opened up uh, just because, um, yeah, you can, you can often lose where a block is. And normally when you're, when, and, nor and normally when I'm writing content, I don't, I don't have the browser zoomed up this big. This is purely just for this uh, stream. So I do have a lot more space, but I often have the list view opened up all the time just so I can control things. But what we could do is come along in here and search for, what is it? Search form, there we go. And then we can say, go back to I think columns and we can adjust. There you go, align middle. And so hopefully this will all be aligned and Columns should will have different options. You can see here, if I select columns, um, you can see the column block, which then has nested blocks below it, does have different options here, and you can adjust things accordingly. So there's a lot to play with. There is a lot to play with here. Um, and then here you have the styles in the section as well. So if I click on save, here I've got this nice little block which I can then just add in. And if I click on search, of course, there's not much content. Well, if I, well, if I type in test, it's going to show me the test article. Well, no, it hasn't because I haven't indexed it. That's why. Anyway, search is for another live stream. I will be covering search in a future live stream. Okay, so there you go. You can easily create a column, chuck in Drupal blocks, and you don't have to write any custom code for it, which is pretty good.